In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is risen. As a young child, I remember reading stories about spacemen, superheroes, and other childhood tales. Some of my most favorite stories were about pirates and hidden treasures. When I used to play with my friends, we would hide things in our backyard and draw up a treasure map so that we could follow the map to the X mark, which always marked the spot. Years later, in the age of cell phones, Palm Pilots, GPSs, X still marks the spot. If you follow the path to the X, you find the right place. If you do not, you end up without your final destination or the place where, or if you do, to the place where the treasure resides. In today's Gospel reading, we hear about a man who was for many years, 38 years, paralyzed and unable to walk. Every year at certain seasons, the water that he laid next to with a number of other ill and invalid people would become troubled and wavy. Whoever would step in first in the water would be healed. For years, the man had hoped to pick, that someone would pick him up and take him to the water to be healed. But when the man encountered Christ, he relayed his tale of woe, stating that, he would, that someone would always get to the water before he would, and that even though he wanted to be healed, he couldn't get to the water fast enough. In life, doesn't always someone get to the water before we do? How many times has something that we wanted passed us by? No matter how hard we have tried, the window of opportunity is closed many times, and we find ourselves being left outside. The phrase that is used by some in law enforcement says, try the door. If the door is closed, try the window. If the window is closed, break down the door. In today's Gospel reading, we hear about a man who has the door broken down for him by Jesus Christ. He is focused so much on the map and the path to the water and that X that marked the spot of his healing that he lost the sight of what was making the water miraculous in the first place. He lost sight of his prayers. He lost sight of God being the real healer, not the water, and was only focused on the water where he felt his healing would come from. Many times in life, we can lose sight of what we are doing and why we are doing something and merely focus on the finish line. Many times in life, we can turn the actual life that we lead into a game that we play, losing sight of what we are really living for and why we are really created. Today, being Graduate Sunday, many graduates focus so much on graduation that they totally overlook the path and what they have learned along the way. And then many years later, will look back, or even in their profession, and say, I remember learning that, but it's a blur. Because sometimes we focus on the X mark before we focus on anything else. Sometimes we can focus so much on the end result that we forget why we are trying so hard in the first place. The treasure that is marked by the X can become worth less than the X itself, because reaching it has become the end-all and be-all of the pursuit. Many times in our life, we follow the wrong path to the wrong X. It is easy to think the treasures in life are financial success, worldly recognition, or bigger and better everything. The X mark of success can become distorted over time because we want to keep upgrading our treasure chest. Many times the original ending point of our X is not the pot of treasure that we feel that we deserve. After all, I don't think there is a person who is alive who doesn't think that they deserve the best that life has to offer. But many times our X mark is not what we feel we deserve. As Christians, However, our X mark should be the spot of godliness. The winding path on the map should be our stops in life that we make in order to help others, to refuel our spiritual wells, to visit the church and partake of the holy sacraments. The X mark should be our salvation that we are constantly striving for in our relationship with Christ. In the gospel today, the man encountered Christ and said that he wanted to be healed but no one could take him to the water. 
The man was talking to the source of all healing, Jesus Christ, the life eternal, and yet thought his healing only could come by stepping into the water first. He was following the wrong map to his goal. Again, we can see that his X mark had been blurred by what he was actually seeking. Was he seeking the water or was he seeking healing from God? Likewise, what are we seeking? Are we seeking salvation alone so that we don't burn forever, as many say? Or are we seeking a close personal relationship with God that offers us salvation as a fruit of that relationship? I hope that for each one of us we are seeking the relationship with God over anything else in our life. You see, in life we are given many maps in which to follow. We will be tempted by the treasure map of humanism. We will be given the map of how to attain worldly success. We will, the ha- ha- we will have the map of succeed at any cost drawn for us by our peers and our bosses in the workplace. We will have the map of sacrificing our family drawn by the creditors who have made the choice of buy now and pay later an appealing treasure for us. We will be handed the map of do what you want, which will be personally delivered to us by the devil who seeks our Christian disobedience. It is very easy to become distracted on our path to godliness. It is easy to follow the path of another ex, but we must seek God in all things. We must look to him for help, for healing, forgiveness, and in all things, And if we do that, he will show us what our treasure will be. God has given us the map. The path is straight, and the X is the treasures in heaven. The man in the gospel sought the treasure of healing in the water alone. Look for God and his path, and he will give you every treasure that you need, leading leading you to his warm embrace. But the trick is that we have to seek God first and let him show us what the treasures are. We have many different signposts of what those treasures are that we can find within the Gospels, within the Church, within the writing of the Fathers, and within the holy tradition within our Church. But there is one song that I want to leave you with today, and I won't sing it, but I'll read you the words that we sing at Fenari Camp every almost every day after the prayer services in the evening. And it says, which is based on the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, which says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be given to you. Alleluia. Amen.